Let's say somebody wants to flip a coin, okay? And they have a 50-50 chance of it landing. If there's a 50-50 chance of a coin landing, if somebody bets you $2, what's the maximum amount of money that you can bet in order for this to be an EV neutral exchange? If somebody's going to bet you in a coin flip, you're only ever going to bet the same amount of money. Why? Let's say that you bet $2 and, the, and your opponent bets $2. In a 50-50 exchange, your equity, your ownership of the total pot is going to be 50%. On any coin flip, you have 50% equity in the outcome. If he bets $2 and you match that with a $2 bet of your own, you have 50% equity in the total pot. That means that before that coin lands, you essentially have half of $4. Let's say that he bets $2 and you bet $3. Why is this a bad bet? You're betting more than him, but why is it bad? Well, it's bad because now you have a 50% equity in a $5 pot. So that means that you just spent $3 to acquire $2.5 of equity. This bet here is an EV negative bet, okay? You were expected to lose money on every exchange. You bet $3 to enter a $5 pot, and you only have 50% equity in that pot, so you have $2.5 of equity in that outcome, right? Or before the coin lands. So you would expect to lose $0.50 cents on average and on every flip. So if you flipped this coin 100 times, you would expect to be down 100 times 50 cents. Let's back up when we use a PUBG example. Let me put it this way, okay? Let's say that I'm steel, and I think that I can out-aim most people, and let's say that my strategy is good, and I think I can out-strategy most people, right? So let's say that in a 100-player game, if I don't get fucked by something stupid, I'm going to come in 10th place. Let's say that out of 100 players, I expect to land in 10th place most of the time. Most of my EV-positive decisions are going to be decisions that get me past this, and EV-negative decisions are going to be decisions that will likely get me lower than this. Let me give an example. Let's say that there's a rooftop and I am steel, and I'm parachuting onto this rooftop. Now, let's say that I see three other people, or two other people, that are also parachuting onto the rooftop. In these situations, these rooftop landings are pretty RNG, right? If they land on the rooftop here, and they find a gun, and I don't have a gun, I'm probably going to die, right? Even if you are steel. So, in this scenario, where you land here, and they land here, let's consider a few things, okay? Let's say that there's a 50-50 chance that they'll get a gun, and if they get a gun, we lose every time, or the large majority of the time, 90% plus, right? This decision means that it's probably EV negative, right? We expect a negative value here, because if we land and die immediately, we, we're finishing far, far, far lower than we would have expected to otherwise. Now, it could be an EV plus decision if... If we say, if we land and find the gun and kill them, we're guaranteed like a first or second place, then in that case, you could argue that this is an EV plus risk. It's the gamble is worth it. But chances are, if you're doing a 50-50 coin flip this early and you don't consider yourself a massive underdog to get a decent place, this is probably an EV negative decision, right? Another example would be, let's say that we're looting houses in the city, and for the most part, we're really geared up. We've got good meds, we've got scopes, we've got a suppressor, we've got two rifles, and we're ready to go really fucking hard in the game, okay? Now, we could continue looting, however, the chances of us finding any piece of equipment that will significantly increase our chances of winning the game are very, 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 very low. And we have a much higher chance of running into somebody camping a room that will just straight out kill us, right? So that would be an EV negative decision. So trying to play consistent equals EV plus, and taking risks equals EV negative. No, sometimes taking risks can be EV positive. Let's say that you have a very rare form of cancer, and you have a 2% chance of surviving naturally, okay? You're almost guaranteed to die. Let's say that the doctors say, we have a very rare experimental surgery, we can do the surgery, but you've only got a 1 in 5 chance to live. Now... If you survive the surgery, you've got a 95% chance of beating the cancer, right? Now, these odds all seem really bad, right? Well, I've got a 2% chance to survive normally. That sucks. Oh, now I could do a surgery. You know, there's a 20% chance to live. But 
that's an EV plus scenario, right? You want to do that 20% chance lead because if you pass that 20%, if you win the roll there, the one in five roll there, then you go on to a 98% roll, which is much better than the 2% you had before. So it's never taking the risk on any of the game, always EV plus, not trying to be a smart ass, just a bit confused. Typically when you're ahead, you usually want to play safe. You don't want to do anything risky because you're giving the enemy an opportunity to catch up using some kind of risky play. Those are the most frustrating people to play against too, are the people that play very slow, very methodically and slowly, you know, wear you down and win the game. Oh my god! Oh, the <laughs> red X. fuck! I died the red dot! Oh, he was running right into me too, I could've had him. Ah, uh, what a cancer game. Imagine if you're Vector as Yeah, holy shit.